Hi, my name is Sean. I'm a lead mitigation specialist here at EPCOR. Today I'll be showing you how to collect a water sample from your home so that EPCOR can test your water for lead. It is important your water is sampled correctly in order to have an accurate reading of your home. As we move through the instructions of how to collect your water sample, I'd encourage you to pause this video as needed and take the time to walk through this entire process. You may want to watch this video more than once to get a better understanding of the testing protocol. This video will walk you through seven steps of taking your water sample. Number one, water system self-assessment. Number two, preparing your sample for collection. Number three, selecting a cold water tap. Number four, collecting your sample. Number five, completing the water sample form that's attached to your kit. Number six, scheduling for the sample pickup. And finally, sending the test for processing and analysis at your EPCOR laboratory. Before we get started with our water sample, we'll need to do a water system self-assessment to ensure that the sample is being taken correctly from the water source and that the water we are sampling today is not going through any type of filtration like a water softener or an undermount filter. First, please check in the basement at the water meter to ensure that there's no water softener or filtration unit similar to this. Next, Look underneath the kitchen sink to ensure that there is no filter underneath there as well. And lastly, you'll want to check the kitchen sink to ensure that there's no tap mount filter similar to this right here that would be located on top of your tap. If your home has a water softener unit or a whole home filtration unit, please set the unit to bypass mode. If you have any questions about your water softener or filtration unit, please contact your manufacturer. If you have an undermount filter or kitchen sink filter, the process there is a little bit different. You'll want to set the bypass mode on the right hand side of the unit. Your model may look a little bit different other than this, but the process to put the filter into bypass should be the same. To summarize, there are a few important things to remember before getting started. Do not sample through a filter. If there is a filter connected to your kitchen sink, ensure that the filter is put on bypass when collecting your water sample. Do not sample from a tap that has a water softener attached, often located in the basement. And if you have an aerator on your tap, do not remove or clean it prior to the sample collection. All right, now let's move on to the preparing the sample for collection. Prior to sampling, you should select a time when the water will not be used within your residence. The sampling process will take approximately 30 minutes and no water usage should be used within the home. Often customers find it the easiest time to sample first thing in the morning before any household activities. If you live in a multi-unit building, such as a threeplex or fourplex, it's not necessary to restrict the water during this time. Just make sure you do not use the water in your unit during the 30 minute stagnation period. Okay, let's look at your water sampling kit. You should have sample instructions on how to test for your water, a sample form, a sample jug with the label located on the side, and a plastic envelope. You will also need a timer or phone and a permanent pen or fine permanent marker. You can pause this video now to get these items in preparation for your sampling. Once you have these materials on hand, the next step is to select the cold water tap. You need to choose a sample location based on where the water is most often used for drinking and cooking purposes. This most likely will be your kitchen sink. Do not sample through your spigot if you have one, which may be a secondary smaller filter located on the right or left hand sides of your sink. If you aren't able to use these taps in the kitchen, you may choose an alternative such as a bathroom or laundry room. You will be collecting your cold water sample, so select a sample location that you're familiar with in order to position the handle for cold water only. Now that we've selected a cold water tap, let's move on to collecting a water sample and completing your water sample form. Before we collect the sample, it's important to note that we require a 30 minute period of no water usage in home. This is called the stagnation period. That means no other taps in the home should be used during this period of time. No flushing of toilets, no doing the laundry, or using the dishwasher. Make sure you communicate this with your household members. Here's a quick overview of the collection process. We'll begin this with a five minute flush of the cold water tap. Then we'll write down the stagnation period start time follow this with a 30 minute stagnation period, and then we will write down the stagnation end time. And then finally, we'll collect the water sample. Turn your tap on fully with cold water, start your timer and allow the tap to flush for five minutes. 
Don't walk away from your tap. Make sure you keep an eye on the water in the sink so that it doesn't overflow. Once the tap is flush for five minutes, turn it off and reset your timer for 30 minutes. This 30 minutes is called the stagnation period where there must be no water usage within the home. Remember to write down the stagnation start time on your water sampling form and label located on your jug. An example, this morning we'll be starting at 8 a.m. Place your jug underneath the tap as a reminder for the 30 minute stagnation period and not to use water. Once your timer has reached the 30 minutes, write down the stagnation end time on your water sampling form and again on the label located on your bottle. For example, this morning we started at 8 a.m., we'll be finishing at 8.30 a.m. Now it's time to collect the sample. Grab your sample jug and place it below the tap if it's not already there. Remove the cap and remember to turn on the water slowly in order to fill the jug to the indicator line. It's important to note that you capture all of the water Once the water level has reached the indicator line, turn off your tap. Remove the bottle from the sink, place your cap securely on top to ensure that there's no leakage. So after you've taken your water sample, please fill out the remainder of the water sampling form that was provided with the sampling kit. This will ensure you receive your results in a timely manner. Please fill out the entire form to the best of your knowledge and call or email us if you have any questions or concerns. Once you've completed your water sample form, feel free to fold it in half. Place it inside the envelope provided and seal accordingly. Please contact us to arrange for pickup. On the day of pickup, please place your water sample outside the front door where it was located. If your sample goes outside and you're worried about it freezing, don't worry, it won't affect the water quality sample. Please make sure your sampling kit is outside of any pets or reach of younger children. Once your sample has been collected by EPCOR, it'll be inspected. Due to our stringent laboratory rules regarding the collection of water samples, samples that do not follow our collection instructions will be rejected. It is important that your water is filled to the indicator line and that you filled out the form to the best of your ability. If your water sample is rejected, you will be contacted by an EPCOR representative to do a resampling. Acceptable water samples will be sent to our laboratory for analysis. You'll be contacted by an EPCOR representative via email or phone with your final results. Thank you for taking the time to conduct your home sample today. If you have any questions about the home sampling process, please contact our EPCOR lead management program and we'll be happy to assist you.